start putting this thing together. So a couple things I want to say quickly first is all this wood is a hardwood, it's just poplar and this is relatively inexpensive. It's one of the cheaper hardwoods and this is perfectly fine. You could easily, you know, use a piece of Douglas fir or like framing lumber, but I decided to go with the harder wood because it'll be more durable and it'll last longer. And as for the plywood, you didn't need a full 8x4 sheet. I think Home Depot sells a smaller size, a little bit bigger than this, that you could probably get for around $10. And this wood was probably around $10. So this whole thing is right around 20 bucks to make this entire sled. So the first part that we're going to work on is putting on the rails on the bottom part. So yesterday I made these rails fit nice and snug in here. It actually took me a few times to, to get them in there nice and tight. I didn't want any slop in here. And I took these down just until they fit in there. So you can see that these rail pieces right here are actually sitting underneath the height of the table saw. And the reason for that is that once these are glued on to the bottom of the sled, there's going to be a gap between the bottom of the rail and the top of the table saw. So a trick to get this at the right height when we're gluing it up is by just using a couple coins and what we will do is just place these in the bottom of the tracks so that then when we glue up the rails they're sticking slightly above the table. Now we can just put this on top and I made sure these rails were in the same spot. I just took a gauge and put this at the same, same spot. And I put the sheet of plywood exactly in the center. The small mark on both the rail and the sled so that then when I put the glue on, I'll know exactly where it goes. And putting some paint cans on there work as a really good weight to hold this down and let that glue set in there. You can see that there's a small gap under there. So while the glue is setting in there, I want to focus on the front piece next. And this front piece is going to be composed of two different parts. And this is just to add a little bit more strength in the front right where the blade is going to be passing through. So I think on this front part right here, I want to add maybe like a chamfer around all three edges. So when this thing is on the sled and I'm doing a lot of cuts, it's really easy to have a piece of wood here and there be a bunch of sawdust under here that gets trapped between this piece of wood and the bottom of the sled. That can pack up really tight sometimes. So relieving that is super simple by just sanding away this edge right here and this way there's a little bit of a bevel under here where the sawdust can go. So the glue is done drying on this, so we can take these coins out now. <laughs> that worked out really nicely putting those coins under there because now there's that gap 
between the top of the table saw and the bottom of the rail. And now we can clamp and glue the front part together. Because I like my lungs and I don't really feel like sanding a whole lot, I can take off the bulk of the material with a saw first. So the best way to go about attaching these back pieces is by first placing it on the table saw because we know that this surface right here is dead flat. So we don't have to worry about any bumps or anything. So you can just place it on here like this. So now this section is done, and the best way that I've found to put this on here and make sure that it's perfectly square is by first running the curve of the saw into the sled. And now that we have that curve cut, we can then put a square into the very, very edge of the curve and square off of that. Alright, so this thing is pretty much done. One thing I did off camera though was I oiled up the rails with just some WD-40 and I let that soak in really nice into the rails and that way it slides really nice. So that's going to be good. I'd recommend doing that a couple times the first few days that you use this just so it kind of builds up that, that smoothness of it. So let's make a quick test pass and I'll show you the accuracy of this. So there's no gap on either side. A lot of times what would happen is it's kind of like that. I'm exaggerating it, but almost like that. But this, I'm registering it hard against this face. So you can see that that is perfectly 90 degrees. All right guys, so that is going to wrap up this project. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. It's always really, really nerve wracking making that cut on the test piece and if it wasn't 90 degrees I really didn't know what what I would do so that is really nice that it came out perfectly 90 degrees and yeah I'm really happy that that worked out so if you enjoyed watching this video I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already 
A lot of the stuff that I do here is woodworking. Also, if you could go down and hit that like button, guys, that would be very much appreciated. I, I really do enjoy seeing you guys do that. And if you got something to say, or you have a question on the crosscut slider, anything else here in the shop, leave that down in the comments, and I will try to get back to you. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, and I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, this is what happens when you think you know what you're doing, and you don't. I thought I measured on both sides correctly, but apparently I didn't. <laughs>